Hello and welcome to the English Language Arts and Reading Professional Learning Community Framework and Instructional Focus Document Overview. I'm Felicia Wilkerson, the Elementary ELAR and Social Studies Coordinator. I'm Sharon Graves, Secondary ELAR Social Studies Coordinator. We look forward to working with teachers and instructional leaders throughout the school year. Please feel free to communicate with us any questions or for additional support. We will provide the components and rationale of an effective PLC framework, identify and explain key components to the instructional focus document for ELAR K-12. through You will discuss instructional implications of using the IFD to plan for student learning and use the IFDs to determine the specificity of what students are expected to learn and the specificity of what you are expected to teach. To create a professional learning community, PLC, educators must focus on three components. Component one, ensuring students learn by quickly identifying students who need additional time and support and providing interventions as soon as students experience difficulty. Component two is educators working collaboratively to achieve a collective purpose of learning for all students. Collaborative teacher conversations must move beyond asking, what are we expected to teach, to asking, how will we know each student has learned? Component three is to focus on results, where educators hold themselves accountable for student results. Working together to improve student achievement becomes the routine work of everyone in the school. Three crucial questions drive the work of an effective PLC. What do we want each student to learn? How will we know each student has learned it? And how will we respond when a student doesn't learn? At this time, please log in to the TEKS resource system and open your Grade Level Unit 1 Instructional Focus document in preparation for the IFD Overview, English Language Arts and Reading, K-12. The Instructional Focus document bridges curriculum instruction and assessment, bundles standards into units of instruction, includes performance assessments, provides important concepts, understandings, big ideas, and vocabulary for the unit and includes the targeted specificity for bundled standards in the unit. Teachers may use the IFD to measure student learning of the bundled standards through performance assessments, determine what content should be taught and what students will learn in each unit and grading period, maintain a focus on standards while planning and implementing instruction, and customize instruction as appropriate. Please pause the video to answer the discussion question. How does knowing this information help to guide your instruction? We will now take a moment to explore the components of the instructional focus document. The IFD components are the same for all grade levels. The components of the IFD we will discuss are the unit overview, performance assessments overarching and unit understandings, misconceptions and underdeveloped concepts, unit vocabulary, instructional components chart, text and unit level of specificity, student expectations, and subsection C, the English Language Proficiency Standards, or the ELPS. Component one is the unit overview. The unit overview provides student expectations, the unit goals, and prior and future learning. The first paragraph explains how the unit is bundled. The design of the second paragraph is threefold. First is the picture of what has happened previously in this concept. Second is to bridge the connection between prior and new knowledge. And third is to describe how the new knowledge will be extended in the current or next grade level. The last paragraph cites the research that was used to inform curriculum choices. Take a moment to pause the video, read the unit overview, and answer the discussion questions. What concepts do students learn in previous grades to prepare them for achievement in this unit? How will your instruction help students apply these concepts at higher levels in subsequent grades? 
Component two is comprised of the performance assessments, overarching concepts, and unit understandings. This component provides a big picture for student expectations and learning outcomes. This table should be read vertically to thoroughly understand the big picture of the student outcomes. Reading the first performance assessment on this example, we see that after reading a fictional text, students are expected to be able to complete a graphic organizer that identifies the linear plot development, including the type of conflict and the central character's role in that conflict. In a paragraph, determine whether or not the conflict was resolved, and if so, how. Provide textual evidence to support your response. If students have mastered all of the content objectives within this performance assessment, then the students have a strong understanding of the overarching and unit concepts. In this example, students will have demonstrated their understanding of elements, theme, conflicts, and etc. within fiction. The third column represents the unit understandings. If students can successfully complete the performance assessment per the rubric provided, then they will have learned and independently demonstrated their understanding of the connections between literary elements and how that knowledge facilitates the reader's ability to make meaning of text. This will be evident in both their graphic organizer and their writing in the paragraph with textual evidence. The performance assessment are ways students can demonstrate their learning or mastery of the taught content. For each unit in ELAR, the performance assessments are structured for reading content, writing, oral and written conventions, writing journals, and a vocabulary notebook. Please pause the video to open the rubric for the first performance assessment on your grade level IFD. After reading, discuss the following question. What specific content should be taught for students to successfully demonstrate mastery? And how can you use the performance assessment in planning your instruction? The third component of the IFD is misconceptions and underdeveloped concepts. A misconception is an incorrect view or opinion based on faulty thinking or lack of understanding. The underdeveloped concept is an inadequate, superficial, or partial understanding of the conceptual idea or skill. How will you address these misconceptions and underdeveloped concepts during your planning? How can you use this information to scaffold and accommodate instruction? Please pause the video for discussion. The fourth component of the IFD is unit vocabulary. The unit vocabulary provided are content-specific terms essential to the unit. Review the unit vocabulary on your IFD. What implications do you derive from the unit vocabulary list on your IFD? Pause the video to discuss the instructional implications. The fifth component of the IFD is the instructional components chart. This chart is for ELAR and SLAR only. This component of the IFD should be viewed vertically as well. The organizational structure for each unit includes reading, writing, and word study, and provides an organizational structure for the text included in each unit. Ongoing texts may be reviewed during whole group and small group instruction or applied by students through meaningful practice. The formative assessment examples provide various methods by which you can monitor student progress. The sixth component is the text and the unit level of specificity student expectations. This table should be reviewed vertically to fully understand both the tech and the student expectation for each standard. Before reviewing the text and unit level of specificity, please take a moment to review the legend. The legend is for you to use to aid in clarifying the text and specificity sections. This legend, including the color coding, is for use with the IFD only. Now let's review the first column, which are the texts. The ELAR texts are divided into five strands, reading, writing, oral and written conventions, research, and listening and speaking. Within each of these strands are components that define the type of text students will use 
or the type of writing students will engage in. There are subsections within some of the components. In this example, the subsection is vocabulary development. Also included with some of the ELAR standards are the College and Career Readiness Standards. The goal of the Texas CCRS is to establish what students must know and be able to do to succeed in entry-level courses offered at institutions of higher education. The College and Career Readiness Standards for ELAR are also divided into reading, writing, speaking, listening, and research strands. The IFD provides the knowledge and skills students need for post-secondary success. These are important to your planning as it is our responsibility to ensure students are college and or career ready once they have graduated. The second column is a unit level of specificity. Read together, this column is the student expectation or SE. There are three components to each knowledge and skill statement and student expectation the cognitive level of rigor, the content, and the context. In studying your text, it is important to understand the cognitive complexity of the standard and which level of Bloom's taxonomy should be addressed during instruction. The cognitive level represents the different levels of thinking the student is expected to demonstrate. The cognitive expectation is the level at which students are expected to perform in order to adequately meet the standard. They are determined by the verbs used in both the knowledge and skill statements and the student expectations. The content describes the what that should be taught and is very specific. In this example, we are to teach both the structure and the elements of fiction. The content expectation is a specific content for which students must demonstrate their understanding at the appropriate cognitive level in order to adequately meet the standard. The context is where the unit level specificity further defines and clarifies both the student expectations and knowledge and skill statements in the standard. It explains the differences in how the content is taught within different contexts, genres, whole text, partial text, literary elements, and so on. Notice and note the different contexts in which students should understand, make inferences, and draw conclusions about the structure and elements of fiction. They should be able to do this with the whole story, part of the story, the structure of fiction, or with particular elements of fiction. Within this component, the IFD identifies both readiness and supporting standards. The STAR is comprised of readiness and supporting standards. Readiness standards are the important and often complex content area concepts for current grade level and future student learning. Readiness standards are essential for success in the current grade level, prepare students for the next grade level, support college and career readiness, requires in-depth classroom instruction, and addresses broad and deep ideas. Supporting standards are the standards used to scaffold student learning. These standards support the content, concepts, and context to help students develop important concepts. Supporting standards are either introduced in the current grade, but emphasized in a subsequent year, reinforced in the current grade, but may be emphasized in a previous year. They also prepare students for the next grade, but not a central role and they address narrowly defined ideas. Let's take a brief look at Figure 19 in your IFD. The text and student expectations for Figure 19 are also presented with unit level of specificity. Figure 19 standards are the process standards for grades K through 12. These process standards are the strategies and structures students use to access learning. They also allow students to demonstrate their understanding, communicate, and apply learning. Take a moment to discuss with your team the cognitive expectations, the content, and the context of one or two of the Figure 19 standards. The final component on the IFD is subsection C, Cross-Curricular Second Language Acquisition, Essential Knowledge and Skills known as the ELPS. If you have students who are second language learners, 
These essential knowledge and skills must be incorporated within daily instruction. The knowledge and skills focus on listening, speaking, writing, and reading. The English language proficiency standards in this section outline English language proficiency level descriptors and student expectations for English language learners, or ELLs. In order for ELLs to be successful, they must acquire both social and academic language proficiency in English. Social language proficiency in English consists of the English needed for daily social interactions. Academic language proficiency consists of the English needed to think critically, understand and learn new concepts, process complex academic material, and interact and communicate in English academic settings. Classroom instruction that effectively integrates second language acquisition with quality content area instruction ensures that ELLs acquire social and academic language proficiency in English, learn the knowledge and skills in the text, and reach their full academic potential. For additional support or questions, please feel free to contact us. We look forward to serving and working alongside each of you this school year.